Okay, so I got a call from the DA. Um, he wanted to inform me what time the trial was. But I was able to get some questions in and really put him in an uncomfortable position. Um, I asked him some questions, some questions he felt comfortable with answering, and other questions he felt uncomfortable. So the question is, what made him feel uncomfortable of asking some questions and other questions he didn't have a problem answer, answering? The first question I asked him was pertaining to, um, because he trying to charge me with a crime uh, of strangulation, right? And I was asking him, well, why can't, why don't you think it could be, why don't you, um, why isn't it even an option that it could be self-defense? And, and his answer was, I'll play, I'll, I was able to record it, so here's the answer that he gave. No, 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 I'm not asking for advice. I'm not asking for advice. I'm saying that you, you're accusing me of a crime. Is that correct? I mean, yes, you are charged with a crime. Okay. And why do you think I committed a crime? Okay, so I asked him, yeah, I'm being charged with a crime. He said, yes, you're being charged with a crime. And then I said, why do you think I uh, committed a crime? But the, the way I asked it, I should have asked it this way. What makes you think I committed a crime? The first question I asked him, you couldn't really hear because I was scrambling to get to record it, was um, why couldn't it be self-defense? And let me start over. I want to start over. No, 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 I'm not asking for advice. I'm not asking for advice. Okay, so he he was saying, um, he switched the question up because he was uncomfortable with the question. It was an easy, uh, easy, simple question. So what made him uncomfortable with answering the question, why can't it be self-defense? So he had to um, tap you know, tap his way around the question and change the question up as if I was asking for advice, well, what considers self-defense and what doesn't consider self-defense? I don't need to ask a white man, right, who sent a criminal from his jail, from his courtroom, right, to where I had to protect my life to know, oh, is this self-defense or is this not self-defense? Should I protect myself or shall I let him kill me? You know, I mean, this is ridiculous. So the second question was, um, what I meant to say, why, um, what makes you think that I committed a crime? So I kind of worded it funny, but here it goes. I'm saying that you, you're accusing me of a crime. Is that correct? I mean, yes, you are charged with a crime. Okay. Okay, so I asked him a simple question. Um, you're accusing me of committing a crime? He said, yes. He had no problem answering that question. Okay. Now, the second question, he's going to tiptoe, he's going to tap around the, the answer, and it's going to be, he's going to feel a little uncomfortable. You can see it the, why, the way he's answering it. And why do you think I committed a crime? Uh, well, we have... Okay, so it should have been, I should have asked it this way. What makes you think I committed a crime? All right, here we go with his answer. Video evidence that, that we uh, would seek to present before a judge or a jury um, that we believe is sufficient to uh, charge you with strangulation. Okay. Okay, so, um, so basically he gave his answer. Um, he didn't answer the question. Um, he, he used big words to deceive the answer, the question. This is what they're gonna do with the jury, right? They're gonna use big words, long sentences, and it's gonna confuse the jury, right? So, um, so basically, the question was, uh, what makes you think I committed a crime? So basically, his answer was, well, we have a lot of stuff on video, and we're gonna, um, you know, we we believe that we have enough trickery in our trickery book, books, to um, make you look guilty. That's how I interpret what he just said. We have a lot of trickery, 
trickery in our trickery book to make you look good, be guilty based on the footage that we have. Now, what would have been the correct answer? The correct answer would have been, well, because we've, we've, we've gotten, um, um, we, someone has pressed charges against you. That's all he had to say. Someone pressed charges against you, so we had to go forward with this case. That's a, that's a simple answer. But no, he had to, because his guilt conscious, his guilt conscious, because he knows all they had to do, the one that pressed charges against me, why did he press charges against me? Because the detective went to him and asked him to press charges. Because the first detective came to me and because I could feel his negative energy, I didn't want to talk to him. So he, he, he was like, oh, you don't want to talk to me? I'm going to go to the criminal and see if he wants to press charges against you, right? So um, he did just that. He went to the criminal, the one that was assaulting multiple people in the store that day. And he, um, you know, had him press charges against me. So the correct answer would have been, someone has pressed charges against you. So let's continue. Now, you have video evidence. You're talking about the Facebook post that you um, that you sent me? As yeah, the, the Facebook video and the 7-Eleven video. Okay, so he um, he's talking about the Facebook. So because I'm representing myself, they um, sent me the evidence of what they're going to use to um, charge me with. Right. The evidence that they, that they sent me was the Facebook post, which only, which starts off with the fight already um, has started. Right. So the person who went and got his camera was late to the party, came after he saw the action and just started, um, you know, video recording. It. This is their prime evidence. This is the only evidence that they sent me of video format. This is the only evidence of video format, even though it's a 7-Eleven. So what does 7-Elevens all have? They all have um, uh, video cameras, right? Video cameras that show um, the parking lot and every angle of the parking lot. Video cameras that show every aisle in the store, right? And there's six total video cameras. But what the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and this guy, right, with his trickeries, is trying to do is use a Facebook post, right? That shows limited footage, doesn't show the start of it, right? To replace um, six professionally, strategically cameras all throughout the 7-Eleven that shows not only the fight itself, but what led up to the fight, it shows um, the, um, the the criminal I call the criminal I also call him the gunman because he because he came at me with a gun, also under the um, the lens of the surveillance video. Enter into the um, parking lot as he was chasing right another individual, and the individual that he was chasing uh, ran into the Seven Eleven to seek refuge, right? But before he um, entered the Seven Eleven, something happened where he turned his attention. My brother was at the door and he ran up to my brother to where my brother lifted up his hands and said, please don't shoot me. Please don't kill me. As if to say, now I was far, I was maybe a block away, but I seen the reaction and I seen the whole thing go down. So I was riding my bike and as, as the, um, the criminal was chasing this person, they ran right by me. So I locked up my bike. Once I saw my brother being assaulted by this individual, I locked up my bike and I went towards um, my brother. By the time I got to my brother, the individual had went into the store to continue his, his assault on the first person. So I, I asked my brother, why are you being assaulted? And he was like, he doesn't know this guy, blah, blah, blah. So I had my hands full because I was um, selling some perfumes and, and different things. So I took all my items that I had with me and I had, I was carrying them, but I went into the store and, um, 
you know, to, to see what was going on. But let's continue with what, with what the in interview said. I mean, what the, um, you know. Okay, now the Facebook video starts off with the fight already started. So how is that evidence? I mean, that, that, this is all for a jury to decide, Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Turner. Okay. Okay, so he can't decide. <laughs> right? So we, we have, um, you know what, the prosecution, right? They have four years of, um, at least four years of, um, you know, law school, right? Then you have the, um, the, uh, the judge with, you know, four, four or more years of law school, right? And hundreds of thousands of hours of locking, locking up black men, right? He's supposed to be the professional, right? So now you have the jury, right? The jury is another part of this equation. But how many years of law school does the jury have? Zero. How many, um, you know, zero hours of understanding the law? So this is what, this is how the American justice system is set up. It's set up that they can convict anybody, right, through the trickeries. You, you saw how he, he, you know, he evaded the question. You know, if I didn't break it down to you, you might not have really understood that he was evading the question and, and dancing around, um, basically dancing around the question, you know, with his um, fancy um, words. So, you know, this is how they use to manipulate the jury. So they, how they're gonna manipulate the jury, they're gonna to try to use the um, Facebook post, right? Um, instead of the six um, surveillance cameras, right? Because the Facebook post, um, you know, it, it's, it's an um, at the end it's a, assumption of guilt. Because if you show the Facebook post, right, as evidence, it's evidence with a, pre, um, a prerequisite, and that prerequisite is that you would have already assumed that I was the guilty one. 